Tell God is good. Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. Bless your heart, preacher. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for you being uh, amen, here with us uh, on this morning. Uh, we are going to continue to share with you uh, on the lives of uh, purity, pure lives. Amen. Pure lives matter. Amen. God loves us enough to send his very best. Amen. And so we share all of him. Let's do our confessions real quick. Amen. We jump right into the word of God. Amen. We can start that yet, did we? We started? Okay. Let's do our confession. Amen. Holy Father. Amen. We welcome all of you that's watching us by way of Facebook. Amen. Live. We pray that stuff will be said today that will bless you, encourage you, strengthen you, challenge you. Uh, amen. To be a better you. Amen. In Christ. Amen. You're not saved because you give your life over to God. Amen. Amen. Today. All right. Let's do our confessions. Amen. Ready? Read. I, I am a new, new person, person in Christ. Christ. My, My whole life is dead and gone. gone. I am raised up with Christ to live a new life. Pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let your word go forth unhindered by any satanic force of power. We declare something wonderful, something glorious, something awesome, something magnificent, something supernatural is happening in our lives right now in Jesus' name. We declare your soul in our lives. Lord Jesus. Because we love God and we are called according to his purpose in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Put your hands together one more time and give God thanks. Amen. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise it when you feel like it. Praise it when you don't. Amen. 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 Glory be to God most high forever. Yes. Amen. Remember, we are declaring this year as a year of supernatural, miraculous Amen. manifestations. Amen. That has already began. Amen. Did you receive yours? Amen. Amen. That there's nothing impossible too hard for God to do. Amen. Amen. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. 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 That's what I believe I receive. Amen. I believe I receive. It is so. 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 Amen. He is doing exceeding and abundant above all that we ask or think according to the power. Amen. That is at work. Amen. On the inside. Come on. Let God work in you. Let his word work. Let his spirit work on the inside of you. Amen. It is so. Amen. The purity of God. We walk in the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. Um, amen. And so we we have an obligation. We do have a, a responsibility. Uh, amen. To live something, to walk something. Even if you don't know the Lord, you need some good ethics. Amen. You need some good core values in your life. Amen. You need a good, solid, strong belief system. Amen. And you need something to be able to guide your life, to direct your paths. Amen. To keep you out of uh, trouble and, and chaos and confusion and you shipwreck your own life. Uh, amen. So we need a standard of living. Say a standard of living. Standard of living. Amen. And God's way is always the best way. Yes. Yes. Amen. God's way is always the right way. No matter who don't like it. Amen. Right. Amen. God has given us the way that we should live and carry ourselves and conduct ourselves. Amen. Not only, amen, outside, but also inside, inside and outside, that we know how to conduct ourselves yes. in the house of God. Amen. Our bodies are the temple of the Lord. Yes. 
Amen. And these temples need to be holy and clean and, and pure. And we must renew our minds. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. With the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yeah. Amen. He come to pull us out of the mud. Pull us out of darkness. Pull us out of the muck. Pull us out of the mire. Amen. You need Jesus Christ in your life. Whether you realize it or not. You need God every day of your life. Amen. He holds our breath. He's the reason why we live and why and why we move and why we have our being. He woke you up this morning. Yeah. Amen. Started you on your way. Thank God somebody said, I was cold and in my right mind. I had the active use of my limbs. Amen. I'm not in a hospital. Amen. They didn't have to call to rescue for me. Amen. I got up on my own accord. Amen. With a praise on my lips. Yeah. With a song in my heart. Amen. To give God thanks for just one more day because tomorrow is not promised to us. Amen. Yesterday is gone. Amen. Amen. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. It's a good day. Amen. It's a wonderful day. Amen. Amen. It's another day of great opportunity. Amen. Amen. That God can show himself mighty. He can show himself strong, amen, on our behalf, amen. What is your expectancy today, amen? What do you believe in God for today, amen? He want to do it in our lives. Yeah. He just needs somebody to believe the report of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. To call those things that be not as though they were. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Tell somebody it's already mine. It's already mine. It's already mine. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Yeah. Amen. Jesus has already come that we might have life. Yeah. That we might have life more abundantly. Better than we have ever had it before. Amen. The goodness of God that have led us even to repentance. Amen. To those that are on the outside that may not even understand the word that's coming out of our mouth. God loves you today. Amen. He wants you today. He desires you today. Amen. Don't run from God, but run to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let him be your rock. Let him be your fortress. Let him be your shield. Let him be your protector. Let him be your healer. Let him be your deliverer. Amen. You can't clean yourself up. Amen. He wants to be not only a Lord, but the Savior of your life. He wants to be the Savior of your life. He wants to be Lord of your life. Let him call the shots in your life. Amen. So if you don't follow us throughout the duration of this sermon, the most important decision that you're making in your life is to give your life over to God right now today in Jesus' name. He's waiting on you. In the day that you hear his voice, listen, don't harden your heart. He knows the trouble that's in your life. He knows the trouble that's in your way. He knows the sin that's in your life. He knows the problem that you have. He want to fix them. There's nothing too hard for God to do in your life. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the life. He's the only way to the Father. He's the only way for salvation. He's the only way to eternity. So give your life over to God. That's the most important decision that you're going to make on this side. And that you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Spirit of God that sealed us unto the day of redemption. Yeah. That's the down payment that he's coming back for yeah. the church. He's coming back for the body yeah. of Christ. And you want to make sure uh, that you have been saved by grace through faith. Yeah. And they say it's the gift of God. Yeah. It's not of our own. That we must repent and give our life over to God. And be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that he is the Son of God. Yes. He's not a myth. He is not a fairy tale, but he is real. Yes. And the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show forth his handiwork. Yes. So we are talking about purity. Yes. Purity. Pure living. Clean living. Yes. Godly living. Righteous living, holy living, amen, it's God's standard, amen, you, you want your natural body to be pure, you want your natural body to be clean, amen, you ought to want your spiritual life to be up to par to that it is God honoring, that you're not just here to please people and to satisfy people, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil of all men, it's just a good way to live your life that's God honoring. That's God honoring, pure living, holy living, righteous living, godly living, that you have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now you need to be a disciple 
You need to be a disciplined one. You need to know what God requires of us. That you can't just be saved and, and born again and, and confessing God and, and going to church and, and serving on boards and, and auxiliaries and, and preaching in the pulpit and deaconing on the deacon board. And your lifestyle is not lived according to the word of God. Amen. 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 There's time out for making excuses. Jesus said, if I, I had not come, he said, you, you would have an excuse. But because I have come, he says, you don't have one now. Amen. You live right because you want to live right. Amen. You live pure because you made the right decision to live pure according to the word of God. Amen. Hey, God, help me here today. And right, the young people, the middle aged and, and the old people, amen, everybody need to live pure. Amen. Our world is a better place when we live by the rule of the word of God. That we love God and we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Uh, it's a life of freedom. Uh, it's a life of liberty. It's a life of victory that we can live holy and pure and clean before the Almighty God. We don't got to worry about jail. We don't got to worry about prison. We don't got to worry about death, hell, or the grave. To uh, be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter who don't like it, uh, we want to honor God. And no matter who don't like it, uh, we want our ways to please the Lord. Everybody want to please everybody. Uh, her want to please wives, and wives want to please her. But who want to please the Lord? Uh, who want God to be pleased with your ways? Listen, and it's not even about your physical body, but what's going on in your mind. Your thoughts need to be pure. Your lifestyle needs to be pure. Every aspect of our lives need to be pure. Say pure. pure. The purity and the singleness of heart. The quality of inward character. It's not just the outside things. It's what's on the inside. Jesus said to the Pharisees, listen, you make that outward garment and that cup and that plate all clean, but on the inside, you just like dead men bones. You like a walk in cemetery, a grave, a tomb, and you got a cesspool of sink stinking stuff that's going on in your life. Tell somebody it's time to clean it up. It's time to clean it up. Huh? And the only one that can really clean it up is God. Now, yeah, he is your roto ruler man. He'll come and he'll rescue you. He'll come and clean it up. If you confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. It's in with character. It's who we are behind the scenes. It's who we are when people is not looking, where purity is concerned. And I don't have to look over my shoulders. I don't have to keep telling lie after lie after lie. I don't have to be manipulative. I don't have to dominate. I don't have to try to control anybody's lives. Because purity speaks all by itself. It's a lifestyle in which we live. It's a moral code of conduct and character that we live every day of our lives. It's called honor and integrity. It's called living sober and righteous and godly, even in this present evil world and age. It's about innocent actions that you're trusting in God to keep us, to keep our mind in perfect peace because it's stayed upon him. It's about a clear conscience that I'm free of guilt. He's already washed me in his blood. To know that there's not there for no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That's why you got to get over in Christ. Yeah. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit of the living God. It's a clear conscience. It's a pure conscience that I've been delivered. I have been free. I have been saved by grace. Yeah. Moral conduct, ethics, belief system, core values. Who are you? What makes you tick? What do you make your decisions and choices out of? What is that? Well, see, what's purity? Everybody doing what they feel like they're big and bold and bad enough to do. But God is still holy. He ain't changing for none of us. He said, come on up here a little bit higher. Come on up here and climb up Jacob's ladder. Come on, wrestle with God. Come on, do, do some business with God. I need help. He'll help you. 
He'll touch you at the very point of your need if you cry out to the Lord. Pure living requires the fear of God, the reverence of God, that we would honor God and we really love the Lord with all our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength. And we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We're talking about uprightness in our character, in our disposition, in our demeanor. Not just what we say, but also how we live as a tag team panel. Uh, it's what's coming out of our mouth, but now our lifestyle is up to par. Yeah. That we're not only talking something, but we're living something. Yeah. We're living something. People can see Jesus in us. They, they can see that, hey, holy people is here among us. Yeah. They don't talk like we talk. They don't live like we live. Their mindset is different. Yeah. And you need to be different. You ought to want to be different. Don't uh -huh. get caught up just in the world system. We need to honor God's word with shameless living. So, so many people living, listen, so shameless, so embarrassed of, of what they're doing and, and how they're living or what they're thinking in their mind. Living condemned. That's a prison. And nothing else in your own mind. And there's so many people that think that, hey, that I can't be free. And I can't rid myself of this stuff. And somebody said, now well, I was born like this. Where wickedness and, and where perversion and where abomination is concerned. And where evil concupiscence is concerned. Where people take stuff to a whole different level. That way, Scripture says that this stuff shouldn't even be mentioned and named among the people that are saved that are born again, that are in Christ Jesus. We got enough of that with unregenerated people. I wonder what church would be like if Jesus showed up in the church. I often ask myself some, some weird questions, weird to some people. I wonder what your life will really be like if you really know that the eyes of the Lord was in every place, beholding the good and the evil of, of, of all men. I wonder what would be different. Because, you know, a lot of times people, listen, they're going to bring out what's pretty in the public. Right? They can put out their best sermons. Right? You, you want to come out, you know, represent God with your best dress on, your best suit, whatever it is. And all that is wonderful. Praise God for it. But I'm talking about the stuff that don't nobody see. God see everything. To know that through God's lenses, a man need to understand that your ways is right in your own eyes. But then when you begin to pair, compare with God's word, and everybody else says, I want to be like Jesus. Do you really want to be like Jesus? It's going to cost you something to be like Jesus. It's going to cost you something to live pure, to live holy, to live godly, to live a righteous, light shining life. It's going to cost you something. You don't want to be associated with evil or evildoers. Lord have mercy again. It doesn't mean that we don't minister to people, right? Because he's given every believer, every child of God, the ministry and the word of reconciliation. That's what he's given us. That lives will be changed. That lives will be changed. After being in God all these years now, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. I don't know no other way to live now. See, it becomes a habit. It becomes a you know, repetition. It becomes a part of you. It says who you are. It's who God has made you. It's because of the stuff that's on the inside that matters. You know how people don't live pure? Because they don't have nothing on the inside. We talk about the Holy Ghost. We talk about the Holy Word. We talk about the Holy God. So why are you acting like that with all that holy in you? I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying I'm, I'm to try be good today. I'm trying to try be good today. Huh? With, with that crazy behavior. That jacked up lifestyle. Now we know ungodly people do what they do, right? You've been saved all your life. Mm-hmm. 
Certain things you can expect from certain people, right? It shouldn't shock you. It shouldn't necessarily blow your mind and nothing like that. The devil is the devil. Jesus said he is a liar and the father of lies. He lied from the beginning. Now, a liar is a liar is a liar is a liar until God get a hold of him. Uh, whatever that is. It, 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 whatever it is. You know, it's just like the prodigal son. The prodigal son. But the older brother, <laughs> that boy has some real problems and real issues in his subconscious mind. What's going on in yours? <laughs> well, I'm gonna dig a little bit. I'm gonna dig. I'm gonna dig a little bit in this series about purity. Now, people need accountability. Need accountability and need to understand discipline. You know, sometimes if we receive correction from those that are over us, God don't even have to come in it. You know, you you ever heard the chain of command? Yes. Right. Even in God, there's chain of command. There's order. There, 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 there's structure. Right. Destruction. When they ain't hear Moses, Moses say, give them your people. <laughs> God say, all right, well, let me at them. Then Moses say, oh, no, no, man. If I let you at them, boy, ain't no going to no gonna be around. So he started interceding for them. And somebody needs to watch over your soul. That means they're more mature than you are. Right? They're more discerning. Than, than, than you are, meaning that they're at, they're at a level in God where they're not stumbling over themselves. They're not living a lifestyle of sin or a day. You're leading by example is what I'm saying to you. You need something to follow after. And you say, well, I got the Lord. I got the word of God. No, that's not all, baby. There's a cloud of witnesses that's there. There's also a cloud of witnesses that's here. Right? Don't let the devil tell you. Don't let the world tell you that ain't nobody living right. It's just another lie of the devil to deceive people that we listen, that we can't live pure and godly in this present evil age. As though God can't keep you. Now he keep you, he'll keep you everything that you have committed under his trust against that day. Now you talking about Alcatraz and, and you know and, and, and breaks and, and who who won't be able to break in your house and tear down your defense system. Well, ain't nobody better than God. Huh? Who, who worry about the devil? Huh? You ought to be worried about yourself. The enemy that's in you. I mean, the, the, the devil, the devil, the devil probably ain't your problem. You're probably your biggest problem. Yes, yes. It's probably the enemy in you. Yes. Yes. That according to Romans 12, 1 and 2, that we should present our bodies, right? Living sacrifices, right? Holding acceptable going to God, which is what? Which is our reasonable service. And we should not be conformed to this world. We transform by the renewing of our mind, right? Colossians 3, that we seek those things that what that are above. Yeah. yeah, where's your mind? Where's your mind? Where's your mind? You got to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. He is God. He want to be with us. Do you want to be with him? Somebody say, you are what you eat. What you eat. Who's influencing you? Who's in your circle? Who's in your ear? What's in your eye? What's in your what's in your eye gate? Your ear gate? Oh, we got some stuff to talk about. Purity of living. Because people are gonna do more what they see than what they hear. They're gonna watch you. As long as you name the name of Christ. Only if you just got saved two hours ago. Somebody gonna be watching you. Uh, you got your best friends. Like I got to say, my best friends, my buddies, I see them to this day. And I'm like, man, you left, boy, you got up, you like Abraham. <laughs> God called you out of Ur of the Chaldees and said, I'm going back <laughs> to show you another land and a better way to live. You, know, you got to just change societies. You got to change your dance partner. Who you walking with? Who you, Lord have mercy here, who you slow dragging with? Huh? Come on, somebody. What? Who you bumping and grinding with? Hold oh, y'all, I'm trying. I'm trying to be good, huh? Who? Who? These things matter. And you wonder, well, why did your life get too out of control? It did not just get out of control. It spiraled out of control because of the sin and the choice that somebody made. And Flip Wilson is dead. The devil made me do it. The devil didn't make you do nothing. You wanted it. 
the bait of Satan. You ever crave some something like, man, I just I just gotta have me some of that? <laughs> huh? You been well, you know, you know, pregnant women know. <laughs> but like somebody, so, somebody will give me something today. <laughs> somebody will give me something tonight. Now, it's cold outside, brother. You gonna go get me something right now tonight, or you won't sleep good in there. It's a crave, it's a desire. That's James 1. It's the bait of Satan. And you may say when you tempt me, you tempt me to God. God don't tempt you with evil. But he says, James says, every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and he is enticed. It's the bait of Satan. It's what is called seduction. You know, there's spiritual seduction and there's also natural seduction. The thing that pull us away from a good solid foundation in the Lord. See, I, I've been done with trying to make people feel good. Yeah? I, 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 I'm preaching into a field of a coma and then you go right out of here and don't live nothing. At least you're going to hear the word. You're going to hear. <laughs> you're going to be like, boy, nothing else. Boy, that preacher died, but he sure spoke the truth of the word of the Lord. Uh, but most lives are not really impactful until you go and now your legacy start to kick in. Who was that person really? Because now people start talking. Like, Who was Jesus? Go ask Jesus. Go ask them. Go ask the people. They'll tell you. They'll tell you exactly who I was, who I am. So these things matter. Because it affects every area of our lives. Impurity. Impurity. That's how people in the fire. They say, well, I'm in the fire. Well, God's trying to burn off those and I, all that impure stuff. You want real gold? <laughs> well, you got to go in the fire. Now, you got to be purified. <laughs> That's called a process. If hope don't want to be sanctified, now they feel like, hey, your body belongs to you. No, 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 baby. Your body don't belong to you. Scripture clearly tells us that our bodies are the temple of God. And then we're not our own. You say now, you're not your own. You say now, you can live like you want to live. You say now, you cannot take your body and make it a part of a harlot and have whoredoms. <clears throat> Otherwise, say, well, oh, oh, you know, we we, 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 we got to clean up Washington. No, you got to clean up whatever your address is. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're going to clean up the White House. No, you better start cleaning up your house. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy here. I already told you, you make your life great in God. Make America great. We got to make our own personal lives great in God. Our community is great. Our family is great. Our marriage is great. Come on here, somebody. Our community is great. Yeah. And care enough to want to change. Amen. And not continue to live insane. And you know where purity and moral failure is in houses? Because parents are not training up their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Because you can't give nobody what you don't have. How you going to give me Jesus? Got Jesus? Uh -uh. How you going to give me Jesus? You don't have Jesus. How you going to give me love? You don't have love. How you going to give me a moral code of common, of character, at least where there is boundaries and lines? Even God got a line that you continue in sin that grace fell bound. No, God forbid. I'm teaching that and you're saying amen. amen. Uh, okay, let me give you a few scriptures then. Let's go to First Timothy chapter 1. I gave you a tunnel. Let me give you a few of them. Some people, you know, turn to the book, preacher. Okay, let's go. Let's go. That's why, you know, we, we want to teach you to be students of the word of God. Right? That you can't come to church to leave your mind outside. Leave your tools outside. You have to come in and embrace God's word, receive it, and beyond that, allow the Holy Spirit to bring back to your members whatsoever the Lord has said. And let him do a thorough, thorough, thorough work in your life. You on the potter's wheel? Hey, enjoy. You know, you ever been on a merry-go-round wanting to get up and everything? You know, shortly day after, you know, after all that has ran its course, you back up, you playing again. But you wanted to get off. And some people still on the merry-go-round. 
Is there a thing that you ought to want out of your life permanently? Yes. Not just temporarily. Temporary fixes. You ought to want full deliverance in your life. Mm -hmm. And don't apologize for living pure. You done made a covenant with your eyes. You didn't worry about adultery. You didn't worry about fornication. Huh? You know, I, you know, bestiality. You talk about purity. The purity of living where our bodies are concerned, where your mind is concerned. That we don't lust after evil things. The things that are, 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 are forbidden of God. If nothing else, listen, okay, you're not saved. Do you, you have a conscience, ma'am, sir? You, you have a conscience. You know, when, when the scripture talks about, oh, help me here. A conscience being seared with a hot iron, listen, that's over in the arena of those that have known God, that have been in Christ, and have drawn back into sin and perdition. It's a whole other level. It's like a dog going back to his vomit. It's like the unclean spirit is going out of a man, walking through dry places, seeking rest and find none, and he said, oh, I remember. I lived there once. Let me see what's going on over in this house. Yep, it's swept, garnished, but it's not occupied with that. He said, hey, I got a legal right to go back over here. I don't got a bus to go down. I got legal right to be here in here, in this personal life. In other words, don't give this, the devil space, no space, no access into your life. Because a little leaven... Leaven the whole of how do you think people become alcoholics? They just go down a fifth of liquor. They had a little shot glass problem. Like, you know. Casually. Let me just talk about me when I wasn't saved. It ain't happened like that. When I wasn't saved, didn't know the Lord, you know, as a teenager, it wasn't a whole joint I smoked, it was just a little puff on my way to a little league baseball game. And from there, that hunger and that crave and that desire intensifies. Mm -hmm. That's what sin does. It's infectious, mm -hmm. contagious. It's, it's like a, it only takes a spark to start a wildfire. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. It'll entertain it long enough. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, He that looked upon a woman and lusted after her has committed adultery already in his heart. In other words, He crossed the line. He, she, they have crossed the line. Some lines are a line of no return. Once you cross it, you can't get back on your own. That's why I'm telling you, 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 you need more than the Lord on this side. Because he's put people in place to minister to us that are gifted, right? That are anointed, right? You, every sheep needs a shepherd. When you need a Moses in your life. Moses missed out because he cared and loved the people so much. He was trying to help them. I'm going to be a Moses in your life in every area but that one. <laughs> huh? Because you're not going to cause me to lose out. At a certain point, I'm going to know that you don't really want to live right. Other than that, I'm going to say, help me help you to be a better you. All right, First Timothy uh, chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1. Let's go over here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you as uh, uh, much scripture as I possibly can. Um, and where purity is concerned. When godly living is concerned, you know, because there's a lot of people that are just loose living. They're just loose living. They're just ungodly living. They, it becomes abomination to God. I'm, just, I'm not just talking about the lesbian and gay community. And yet I am. Or yet I will. And yet we shall. And we're not beating. We're not, we're not badgering anybody. We're not condemning anybody. Your own conscience will do that. All you got to do is just give you the word of God. And at a certain point, even in your own life, you knew that stuff you was doing was wrong. Nobody had to tell you. Some things are just by nature. They're just natural. It is naturally wrong. Just naturally make you feel uh, filthy. Just naturally make you feel nasty. Just naturally be like, listen, this is stuff not right about that. Else your conscience wouldn't be convicting you. So he says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, and uh, I want to go down here to, um, 
Verse, uh, verse 3, just so I can kind of just cover a little range of this, uh, do some kind of distance uh, to verse 11. Uh, it says, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 1, verse 3, it says, As I urge you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some so that they teach no other doctrine. Right? Some people are teaching doctrines of demons and all this, this stuff is okay to do. It's all right for you to live like that. You know, it, it, it's cool because everybody going to heaven, no matter what. And Jesus said, a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. Not everyone that called me Lord, Lord, shall in the kingdom of heaven, but he that what he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Right? Now y'all know I'm a teacher, preaching the word of God, right? All right, so all right, so don't 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 get so caught up into your notes and outline, so you gotta be versatile. <laughs> It's an action movie. <laughs> so he said, don't teach another doctrine. There's false doctrine out there. There's false teachers. There's false prophets. There's ironies out there. That will tell you. Don't do as I do, but just do as I say to you. Now, I, I listen. I refuse to follow anybody. If a man might have ruled his own house, huh? you married, preacher, you the pastor, and your house out of order, huh? your wife, your children, something gonna tell on you. Your finances, your money, your stewardship, it's gonna tell on you. You know, if you get close enough, you know, some people are real good con artists now. That's what they pure living do for you. They just con artists. Right when you look through the eyes of purity, you're not looking for garbage. <laughs> you're not looking for mess. It just kind of just show up, right? Yeah. It kind of just manifests itself, right? It's almost like you walk in the room and be like, something don't smell right in here. Because your nose has been what sensitized now. Just like your spirit man is. There's the things of the spirit, the things that are pure, the things that are godly, the things that are holy. It's something happening to you on the inside. And you're like, we're not trying to look for nobody dirty, larger, but you start, like, you know, all of a sudden you walk in and kick you, like, what is all this dirty stuff around here on the floor? <laughs> now that you get close enough. That's why a lot of people don't want you close in their life, because they don't want no accountability. Yeah. When you start getting close enough, you start asking questions, right? Huh? That's why some people don't want you to their house, because they know, they already know. We did visitation for some years, and we can hear people coming, walking up. You know, you ever did it? Like the rebel coming over. Oh, I said, you need to call people to go visit their house. Not all the time. <laughs> Not all the time. Now you just need to show up. You know, sometimes Jesus just show up in your life. That's something that you need to deal with. See, sometimes says, you only get hired for a little while. <laughs> now, this is going to come out. Yeah, the children be talking on the phone. I'm gonna tell them they ain't here. Tell them they ain't here. And my mama say she ain't here. <laughs> See, children got their innocence. See, they ain't gonna just lie for you. Whatever you tell them, that's you right. That's what it is. Whatever you say, that they gonna repeat it. Only impure people twist stuff, mess up stuff. All right, let me let me read more than what I because we get stuff. So he says that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which cause uh, disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. He says, now the purpose of the commandment is what is love from what? From a pure heart. From what? From a good conscience. Right? And from what? And from sincere faith. For which some having swerved have what turned aside to idle talk. It's not sound doctrine anymore. It's their opinions. It's their compromises. He says they're designed to be teachers of the law. Uh, he says understanding neither what they say, Lord have mercy again, what nor the things which they affirm. So how are they going to lead you when they like all messed up? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't have any kind of comprehension, or any kind of understanding. You just got to go through the motions. In other words, God might not even sent you to be leading nobody. So 
So it says in verse 8, but we know that the law is good. What if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, knowing this, the law is not made for a righteous person, but for what the lawless and the insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and the profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of, mo of mothers, and for manslayers, you know, manslaughter, <laughs> manslayers. It says for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. And it says, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel uh, what, of the blessed God, what, which was committed to my trust. I'm telling you, that's saying a whole lot. That we can't, we're not going to get into today. But that's covering just about everybody. Everybody. Because God is a super judge. He's just on the circuit of the earth, ruling by his awesome power. There's no change, no variableness or turning in God. We are the ones that must change. And change isn't change, what, until we change. Hmm? Now, let's go over to chapter 3. Let's go to chapter 3, same book, chapter 3. Mm -hmm. First Timothy, uh, chapter 3. Are y'all with me here? I'm going to read down from verse 1. Is this is a faithful saying. If a man desires a uh, position or office of a bishop, uh, elder, he desires a, a good work. Right? Some people call them overseers. You know, different titles. Okay, whatever. But you still got to be qualified. Huh? You still have to have the qualities and the qualifications to occupy certain things in God. In the kingdom. Right? So a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able or apt to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy of money or filthy local, but general, not quarrelsome, combative, not covetous, one who rules well his own house, having his children submission with what all reverence. Right? They have to have some kind of order in your house. Right? You can have your kids out there just renegading. Right? Making Lord help me here, bless their heart. You know, you know, you got five babies. You ain't even you ain't even 25 years old yet. You know, something just not right. You know, nobody's condemning you over that. Nobody condemn. But somebody's gonna step up in your life and say, wait a minute, baby. Where the daddy? Where the baby dad is or something. You know, you get child support, or baby, listen, don't ruin your life like this. You got five babies, okay, what's your future now? Where are you going now? Where's God in your life? Why are you being so promiscuous? Somebody. Back in the day when we grew up, boy, anybody would just call you out, call you right on out. We didn't have a whole lot of this, like babies having babies. When somebody whip your little take hear the hell out he was saying. It, you know, take your little fast tail home. Yeah. <clears throat> I ain't gonna say no more than that. Huh? Smelling yourself. Little boy. <laughs> but we just let this go going as though it's normal now. Huh? And they invite them over to the house. And they go in the room and lock the door. Somebody say, oh, you petty now. You call it whatever you want to call it. Because you done brought hell in your house now. You done brought impurity in your house now. Because you don't know what they're doing behind them closed doors. Oh, God, help me here. And, and nobody's teaching. Nobody's teaching. The old women seem to not teaching the young women. Or the young women, I don't want nobody to tell me what to do. I don't believe in the fact that there's nobody available. You said you don't want it. Older men. Teaching the younger men. To be responsible. Where, where's that training now? now where, where is that the, the virginity? The, the purity of virginity. The honor of virginity. Now, everybody, Lord, have mercy. Here, just, hey, just, you want it? Yeah, come on. Get your stuff. 
The divorce court said a whole lot of it. The disease center said a whole lot about it. The age rate is saying a whole lot about it. Disease is saying a whole lot about it. Ask the pharmaceutical company because they try to keep pace with all this stuff. That we don't even know what to give you now. We don't even got nothing to help you now. Certain things is the judgment of God. Because you violated a spiritual law. So now you brought yourself into a place of terror and horror. And the one that's trying to help you and guide you and steer you in the right direction, you mad at him? And what you and Israel did, they say, oh, Moses, we don't want to hear you. We want to hear God. Then God started talking. They said, we don't want to hear God. They said, we'll hear you, Moses. They was lying. We're going to obey you, Moses. And they went right on back to their foolery. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that shake up a life. You know? Because somebody praying, somebody love and care about somebody love. To tell them the truth. To tell them the truth. To save their life. Per living matters. So he says, if you desire this offer, this place, this position, you got to rule your own house well. Verse 5, for if a man is not allowed to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice that's being puffed up with uh, pride. He falls into the uh, same condemnation of the devil. And we know the scripture says pride goes before destruction, right? Hard is lifted up spirit before it falls. Jesus said to hell, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He said, moreover, he must have a good testimony, here's what it is, a good testimony of those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and also into the snare of the devil. And then he goes on talking about the deacons the same way, servants, ministers, right? We all servants, right? Servant leaders. God got some standards and some qualifications of where you live pure. And we just point your finger at the preacher, how you living? You saved, how you living? Right? You want to crucify the rebel, he messed up making a mistake. You messed up and making a mistake. Now you want all this mercy. And I know, I get it. I understand we have to a high standard. I get it. But sin is sin. And the way you sin is still death. Amen. You all do not want nobody to die and go to hell. It don't make it right. I ain't saying it make it right. I'm just saying you don't know the day and the hour that they will repent and get their life right with God. So if a man is overtaken in a fault, you know what? You, you that are spiritual, right? Uh, Galatians uh, 6, restore such what the spirit of meekness, what then you got to consider your own self. Without God, you ain't that good. I'm not either. Without the Holy Ghost and His Holy Word, we're not that good. It's because of Him. Now unto Him that's able to keep me from falling. Huh? To keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory, dominion, majesty, power, both now and forever. And let the church say it. Amen. Let's go over here to chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Same book. Mm -hmm. I feed you real good. You won't leave here hungry. Mm -hmm. You're going to live here thinking. You're going to leave here pondering. You're going to leave here saying, Lord, <laughs> we all can do better, right? The greatest, the biggest room in every one of my lives is called the room of what? Improvement. Improvement. All right, this is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Are y'all there? Amen. I'm going to just read verse 1 and 2. Now the Spirit uh, 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 expressly says or speaks that in a latter time some will what? Depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared or burned up with a hot iron, scorched. You know that's problems, right? It's like a person that, that, that has no, no conscience. There's something that don't bother them, right? That's how you get mass murderers, mass rapists, and, and killers, right? And deceivers, those that dominate, manipulate, and control. It don't even bother them. Because they don't care about nobody but themselves. 
And so they'll lie and they'll lie again. They'll cheat, they'll cheat again. And they'll go from one state to another, from one city to another, from one house to another, doing the same thing because they really haven't changed. Um, all right. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 3 talks about perilous times. Let's go over there real quick. Second Timothy chapter 3. Because we have to live pure. You know, Jesus said, no, but the pure in heart, right, shall see God. So our heart has to be pure. Our, our mind has to be pure. And how do you get a pure mind? You must renew it by the word of God. Pure mind, pure thinking. Paul said, think on these things. What you thinking about? What's in your mind? What's, what's on your mind? What are you allowing to fester? And a lot of this is what's going into our ear gate and our eye gate. Right, that's what's feeding. What's feeding you? What's feeding you? Um, all right, so uh, that's uh, 2 uh, Timothy uh, chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And he says, but know this, that what? In the, in the last days, he says, perilous times shall come, trying times, troublesome times, hard times, depressing times, right? Immoral, ungodly times. They're upon us right now, right? For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Well, that's a lot, ain't it? And somebody say, man, I'm going to live pure with all this stuff going on in the world under the shadow of his wing. Where you find safety and refuge and know that he is your rock and that he is your fortress. He is your shield and he is your protection. Hmm? He's the keeper. God is. Then we got to have good stewardship. Say stewardship. stewardship. Good stewardship. Now this is uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. You won't be able to turn all these. You can just write them down. He says, know ye uh, not that uh, you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. That's a question mark at the end, right? Some, some questions you got to answer yourself. There were some people he not dwelling. The Holy Spirit is not dwelling on the inside of them. Verse 17 says, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And that's why Peter said, Be ye holy, for the Lord your God is holy. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. The connected to God's living. Connected to the holy living. He says, holiness without, right? No man shall what? Shall see the Lord. Let's go to Romans chapter uh, 13. Oh, some of my holiness, man. Hey, ooh. Now you're now you cussing at them. <laughs> they don't want to be a part of that. But they feel like everything is all right. Acceptable. Say what they want. Do what they want. Pardon my French. So that's guile coming out of your mouth. Now clean that stuff up. Tell them I clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. You know, faith without works is dead, right? Be it alone. Got to come over in God and repent. So we need repentance in our lives. We need real change in our lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Romans uh, chapter 13. Uh, let, let's go to verse 9. Just kind of for the sake of time. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. Are you there? Uh, verse 8. Let's look at verse 8. Romans 13 and 8. He says, Oh, no man, nothing except to do what? To love one another. For he who loves one another, what has to fulfill the law? For the commandment, he says, You should not what? Commit adultery. Right? You should not murder. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. You should not covet. And it said, if, if there's any other commandment, it says, uh, they are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, love does no harm, verse 10, to his neighbor. Therefore, love is what is the fulfillment of the law. All these out of washing and, and cleansing, and nobody thought we got to get to the priest. No, we have a high priest. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Yes. Verse 11 says, uh, And do this knowing the time, knowing the time that now it is high time to wake up out of sleep. 
I got a whole mess that we call this time. Nothing else is your time. It's time. That's about his time. Then now it is, he says, high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. He said, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. Therefore, he says, let us cast off the works of darkness. Now let us put on what? The armor of light. Let us put on the armor of light. In other words, let us walk by the rule of the word of God. And so we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Right? We, we must have our loins girded about the what? We're truth. So we need to walk in the full total armor of, uh, of, of the Lord. All right? So now let's read down a little bit farther. The night is far spent. Verse 12 again. The day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day. Right? Not in revelry and drunkenness and in lewdness and lust. Not in strife and envy. That's covering a whole lot, isn't it? Right? That we got to make sure. That we understand the commandments of God to keep them and obey them. And the thing that we need to distance ourselves from and stay away from. This, and there's some people that you need to disconnect from. Right? There's some places you don't need to be going and hanging out in. There's some environments that you need to dismiss yourself from because evil communication corrupt the matter. Corrupt the matter. So he says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 14, and make no provision. Lord have mercy. For planning, foresight, forethought, right? That's called premeditated. He said, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust or to gratify or satisfy it. So some people feel like I can do any and everything that I want to do. I'm called of God. I'm gifted of God. I'm anointed of God. And if you turn back over here to Romans chapter 11 and verse number 29, you'll see clearly where the word of God says, for the gifts and the call of God are without repentance or the irrevocable. In other words, people's gifts can still work and their life just not up to par. Huh? They can preach it. They can teach it. Gifts of the Spirit working in their life, but they got some bad fruit. You can see bad fruit, and you can smell it too at a certain point. And yet it's rotten. It's rotten. And it's like really a, a, a death process. So, okay, I understand you gifted. Okay, I, I give honor to whom honor is due, but you're not going to lay them nasty hands on me. That's right, preacher. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Some hands you don't want on you. You don't need on you. That's why you need to know those that labor among you. I don't care about the jumping, the shouting, the hollering, the screaming, and all, all that kind of stuff. Praise God for it. Now, don't get me wrong. I get happy. I preach it. I preach it about every message that I teach, but that's not my assignment. Go in the back room, the backyard. The back seat, the back bathroom, and doing all kind of stuff. I remember years ago they used to do ten revivals. Boy, they go get lit up with moonshine. Come back in, you be. Like, I see why they all hyped up. Huh? It's documented. Snorting cocaine. I know. I know. But we don't want to expose them about this certain stuff. Paul said, "I stand in defense of the gospel because somebody's life is at stake." Now, you came to church high on weed. And you don't have a prescription. <laughs> Something that where purity is concerned, is not acceptable. Oh, what's your reason behind? Okay, you 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 drinking. No, you're not drinking, bro. That's a, you listen, you got a whole bar in your trunk of your car. You got your gin and your juice. I'm 
doing the best I can, God. I'm doing the best I can, Lord. And we will submit ourselves to God, resist the devil. He will flee from us. That's scripture. Most people have not submitted themselves to God. I'm telling you, they have not submitted themselves to God properly, appropriately, and properly. Let's go to Romans uh, chapter 2. Uh, we're going to close here. Uh, Romans chapter 2. Now, there's something, you know, myths and some people talk about that need to be debunked. Let me show you this in Romans chapter 2. I'm going to look at uh, verse number. 17. So God's righteous judgment is sure. We know that, right? He's a super judge. Sooner or later, right? People have to tell for the great white throne judgment. See the Christ. So he says in Romans 2 17, he says, Indeed, you are you are called a Jew and uh, rest on the law and make your boast in God. And know his will and approve the things that are excellent. Being instructed out of the law. And are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind. A light to those who are in darkness. An instructor of the foolish. A teacher of babes. Having the form of knowledge and truth in the law. In other words, they're supposed to have the goods, right? You know, God shows the people. Right? You know how some of you put themselves on a the pedestal? Right? To be the lead, to be the guy, to be the captain, to be the lieutenant, right? <laughs> to be the corporal, to be the general. So here's what he says. You're supposed to, as an instructor, verse 20 again, of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and truth in the law. Have an understanding of how if people are supposed to live and conduct themselves. He says in verse 21, you therefore who teach another. Do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? I'm closing. Am I pure living? Uh, do you steal? If as you will say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Now, you know, some people are doing this naturally and spiritually. They saw adulterers against God. Huh? And as his people, the story of Gomer and Hosea, Gomer was just horrible. But God said, I'm going to show you you through, through this couple. I'm going to show you yourself. Right? At a certain point, people got to see themselves. In order to appropriately honor the word of God. So he says, you who say do not commit adultery. How is it all around the country? All around the country and all kind of stuff. The evangelicals. Right? They tell me, oh, we shouldn't do it. How are we supposed to be living? Abortion and, you know, and the gay and homosexual rights. And, and shouldn't they have, should not they have them? All this kind of stuff they're getting into. And then all of a sudden, they on the news. Now give it a count of yourself, Joe. Because you didn't just do that yesterday one time. You, you've been just so adamant, right? And you've just been so dogmatic towards other people. And you've been doing the same thing? You, <laughs> you got more than skeletons in that closet. <laughs> it's got two doors on it, too. Let, it, let's open it up. See what, what's all in there. In other words, what's in the darkness is coming to the light. And, so, and, and what he's saying is, in this, is hypocrisy is being manifested. Great hypocrisy is being manifested. Uh, because you're telling me, you know, not to commit adultery, you know, don't sleep around with your wife, don't be flirting around doing all those kind of things, and you're doing that and worse. So he says, verse 22, you who say do not commit adultery, uh, do you uh, commit adultery? You who abhor idols, he says, do you rob temples? They ain't robbing temples, they're just robbing people too. Anything can become an idol in your life. Anything that you put in the place of God will become an idol. Right? You know what marriage is concerned? When marriage is concerned, anything you put in the place of your husband and your wife, right? That has become an idol. A hindrance. 
And all it is is false worship. In other words, look at him, look at him. You bow down to something that's forbidden of God. Oh, that's deep, y'all. That, that, I'm telling you, it's a deep, that, that, listen, you are bowing down to something that is forbidden of God. Something or somebody that you're not in covenant with. Oh, Jesus, help me now. Okay, let me try something else. So, he says in verse 23, you who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God to break in the law? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles, those that are not saved because of you. <laughs> because of you, as it is written, because of you, because of your own lifestyle, your decisions and your choices. Hmm? And so first, uh, Second Thessalonians talks about that no man deceive us. But that day is coming upon us. It's already here. And we experience what scripture calls a falling away. They talk about the man of sin being revealed, the son of perdition. That is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Man of sin that will be revealed. That is already, I believe, revealed. This, that spirit, nothing else, the spirit thereof. And Jesus said, let no man deceive you, right? That was uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let no man deceive you by any means. So that they should not come except there come a falling away first. Well, you got many people that dart the door of assembly, the churches, the synagogues, you know, houses of worship, no matter what your marquee says. But yet, are they real true kingdom people? Even in Jesus' day, as he went into the temple, everybody that was there wasn't real kingdom people. And he said to them, he said, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. He said, but no, because I have told you the truth. He said, you hate me. Oh, you like the lie. You like the lie tellers and the thieves and the robbers. He said, you hate me. What well, I have told you the truth. You saw my life. But you know what the problem was? They didn't want to change. They didn't want to embrace truth. But so Jesus plainly said in John 8, 31, 30, you shall, you shall know the truth. The truth that nobody else knows, the truth that you know, that you have embraced, that engrafted word. As James talks about that, is able to save your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotion. See, y'all just missed the tongue right there because you're writing. You can't write and listen at the same time. Y'all ain't fooling me. I know. I was taught that. See, I'm, I'm multitasking. Uh -huh. That's why you need to take because even in the message, you check in, you check out. Right? And I get it. God takes you on the journey. Right? Of what you hear, what he's dealing with you on, on your level. Right? Did you check in, you check out. You say, oh man, boy. Man, I've never had a rabbit trail. <laughs> I gotta get back now. <laughs> I'm still talking. I've been there. I'm with you. It takes a lot of discipline and training. Right? In order to stay focused and to stay tuned. That's why I told you. I go back and listen to all the messages that I've ministered and preached because I'm beating myself too. And I said, well, how can I be a better me, a better minister, a better representative of you, right? To make sure your people get thorough understanding. Because we don't get, we don't have much time when we think we have. Our life is like a vapor. Yes. And look how we spend together. Listen, I got to make it impactful. I didn't climb out of my bed this morning and come here to be played with, a toy with the children. Right? You got to leave out here saying, man, my God. He left Jesus present. They went out saying, man, never, never, never man speak like this man. He don't talk like the Pharisees and the Sadducees or the scribes because he was different. He wasn't trying to fit in. Because he was bringing about revolution and change for people. Just radical stuff. Like, okay, you want to be a part of me? Huh? Huh? You really want me? Huh? Come on. Come on. Come on in here. Come on, eat my flesh. Come on in here. Come on, come on. And drink my blood. And they said, oh man, he done fell off his rock. And so they started condemning. Called them accountable. He just said, well, I'm just low. The road was short, yellow for us. 
We're going to have communion together. Amen. That's the Lord. That's still running. Amen. We can cut that off. Amen. Period is important. You know, because Paul talks about examining, uh, brother, oh, baby, talk about examining.